Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about setting up offline Wikipedia access on Windows 10. So I've done some other videos on this. I've uh, set it up on a Mac, iOS, Android, Raspberry Pi servers, Docker, you name it. But I hadn't done Mac and Windows, so I made a Mac video, now I'm making a Windows version of video. So if you go to the Kiwix website, you'll find this downloads and then reader. And then under Kiwix reader, you'll see there's a Windows 2.0 uh, beta release. I tried that and wasn't able to get it working. So I found another option I think is going to work. So besides the reader, you'll want a Wikipedia Zim file. So if you go to Downloads and then Content, and then on the left side here, you see it says Available Zim Files. You scroll down to where it says Kiwix Wiki. And this page has all sorts of wiki files. Um, it has different languages, types, it has like physics, uh, medical, probably has a math one maybe. Uh, the one I like is the simple one. So I'll search the page for simple. And this is the one I've downloaded right here. It's the simple all no pick. So simple means it has abbreviated articles and no pick means it doesn't have pictures. And this is 443 megabytes, but there's all sorts of different versions. Uh, this one is simple all mini. This one's simple all maxi. Um, there's this Ray Charles one. If you just want to test, this is only 1.4 megabytes. So you can test your setup. This one's even smaller here, uh, but there's a huge uh, range of Wikipedia files you can download here. So I've already downloaded that to my downloads folder, so I'll minimize this. And what I want to do is go to the Microsoft Store. So I'll go down to my search here and just type store. I type store wrong, and it's still coming up. So I'll open up Microsoft Store. And then I'll go up to the search here, and I'll type in Kiwix. So it's K-I-W-I-X. I'll hit Enter. And we see this Kiwix JS here. So I'll click on this. I'll click Get. Okay, so now I'll click launch. So this tells about it. It has the changes in it. I'll close this. So it looks like we have the Ray Charles version here. I'll click close on this little message. So I'll click on the little wrench up here, and then I'll click on select storage. And you can do select file or select folder. I'll just do select file for this one. And then I'll choose my zim file. I'll hit open. And here we have it up now. So I can search for something in here. There we go. Here's an article on Abraham Lincoln. And click on Civil War, President, Elected, Parliamentary System, Head of Government. So you can see this very fast because it's hosted right on my machine. And this will also work if there's no internet access. So this could be used um, if you're traveling and you want Wikipedia available for your kid. Or say you have spotty internet, you could download the Zim file at night and then use it during the day. So now the data will get out of date eventually. So um, you're not going to find up-to-date information, but if you're looking up, say, uh, a dead president or um, maybe an old car manufacturer or you name it, a country, you can find that data on here. Um, it's still going to be way more up-to-date than your typical paper uh, encyclopedias we used to use back in the day. It could also be used in a survival situation where the Internet is shut down completely and you want information like on, say, first aid, uh, edible plants. Um, it shouldn't be your only source of information, but... You know, there's a lot of stuff on Wikipedia. You would still have to sort through it and you still have to trust it, but um, it's nice to have it if you need it. So let's go over the rest of this. Let's, if I click the Kiwix icon, it takes me to home. This uh, opens up a random article. I think that's a neat feature. So you can just click that and uh, like if you're bored, you can just, you know, browse right on Wikipedia. Then we have our settings again. So on this download links, so if I click open library, I have to click on allow internet access, then I can open library. So this is showing Zim files here. So if I look up Wikipedia, I could probably download it right within this um, system. And it says don't do it on mobile because it will download this on your mobile connection, which could uh, you know, cause you to have charges. So I'll do that. I like to download the Zim separately. Then I can use it on different devices easily. I don't have to go searching for it. It's just in my download folder. Looks like we have a dark mode interface. Uh, dark theme for articles. It says display style is select style automatically. Use Wikimedia desktop style. Use Wikimedia mobile style. And remove max page width restriction. Then it says hide toolbars when scrolling. Use locally cached display styles. Display images if any. Permanently hide active content warning. It says start character of alphabet, end character of alphabet, set max number of search results, and enable opening articles in a separate browser tab. 
So I'll just scroll through the rest of these. It has a privacy setting thing here, expert settings. Uh, it says content injection mode is jQuery or service worker and API status. A lot more things than most people are going to need. So it looks like we have two home buttons here. Yeah, so you can click up with the little Kiwix bird or the home button. Uh, looks like I can click forward and backwards within the article. So you can use the arrows here. Yep. Then we have table of contents on the page we're on. And then we have a minimize and zoom. So you can change your font size. Let's see what this thing does. This takes us to the top of the page. There we go. So that's how you can set up Kiwix on Windows 10. Like I said, I tried that desktop app. It was confusing. I didn't get it working. So I think the Microsoft Store version is probably the best version. And it works fairly well, really. It's fast, um, it downloaded quickly, and it has all the features on it. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.